Hello Booktube and welcome to my bookshelves. So first of all I apologise if my voice is croaky and sore, I'm suffering from a cold and it's, yeah, it's, made, my, it's made my voice sound croaky I'm afraid but we will we will get through this and and I've got some some interesting books to show you. So it's that time of year, it's middle of December and people start looking back at what they've read during that year and this video is no exception. I'm going to show you some of the murder mysteries that I have read this year. This is not my top 10 or anything, this is just a selection of, of murder mysteries that I've read this year and I wonder if any of these will make my my top 10 at the end of the year. So these are in no particular order. So the first two books are from the same series and I did a whole uh, wrap up video of this series and this is the um, Sergeant Crib series by Peter Lovesey. This one is called Wobble to Death. This is the first one in the series. These are really really amazing books. If you like historical mysteries then these are for you. These are set in Victorian London. Um, there are six or seven in the series. They're all standalone. You don't have to read them in order. Um, and they follow uh, yeah, um, Sergeant Cribb and, and they all take a particular theme or pastime of Victorian culture. So this first one called Wobble to Death um, takes as its as its theme, as its setting, the world of pedestrianism, which was huge in Victorian London. And you have a sporting event where people who will just walk around a track for days and days, and they will do hundreds and hundreds of miles. And whoever has done the most miles at the end of five or six days is the winner. And they can walk, yeah, they can do like two or three marathons a day like like 40 miles in one day they could walk amazing feats and it was yeah i'd never heard of it before i'd read this book and i thought always oh, this is all made up but no pedestrianism was actually a sport in victorian london and then one of the competitors dies and sergeant quib is asked to investigate yeah really short books as well quick reads but yeah if you like historical fiction then the peter lovesey Sergeant Crib books are are recommended. On that note, the second book is also from that same series. This was my favourite one of the of the series. This one is called A Case of Spirits. This one uh, centres around fortune, uh, not fortune telling, um, seances and contacting the dead, which was again a huge pastime in Victorian London. Um, so a group of, of people are gathered together for a seance, they're all sitting around the table with their hands, fingers touching, the medium um, um, sort of turns all the lights off so everything's in pitch blackness and then the medium is killed and it's one of the people at the table but how can it be because they're all sitting in a circle with their hands touching? So it's one of these classic locked room style impossible murders, which I absolutely love. Um, yeah, and that is A Case of Spirits by Peter Love. So yeah, I recommend the whole series. I've done a video as well, so go and check that out as well. Yeah, A Case of Spirits by Peter Lovesey. Next book is another series that I've absolutely loved. And again, I've done a series wrap up on this one, and that is The Ashley Weaver, a most novel Revenge. This is the third book in the series and the first one is Murder at the Brightwell which I read last year for Cloak and Dagger Christmas. It had been on my shelf for ages but I picked it up, absolutely loved it and then immediately read the second, third and fourth book in the series. These are um, these are set in the 19... 30s so they are golden age settings but they are modern books they're written currently um, and they follow a husband and wife as they get mixed up in all sorts of intrigue this one is a classic country house style murder mystery um, a family all gathered together 
and and one of the guests there announces that she is going to write a a, a memoir exposing somebody there or accusing somebody there of of murder and then another murder happens obviously and the the two lead characters are Milo and Milo and Amory and they are on hand to investigate yes a classic golden age style murder mysteries and that is the Ashley Weaver series this is a most novel revenge Next up is an Agatha Christie, and I'm currently doing, I started an A to Z Agatha Christie read project, and I've started with the A's, I've um, got a few more to do on the A's, but previously to that, this year, I'd only read one Agatha Christie, and that is A Murder is Announced, and the only reason I read this one is because we were doing the stage play of it, so I'm in a drama group, um, we do three shows a year, and... And I was directing, and I chose to do the stage version of Agatha Christie's A Murder of the Mouse. Absolutely brilliant, loved it. Yeah, uh, well received. And so before we started rehearsals, I made sure I'd, I'd read the original novel. But that was the only Agatha Christie that I had read this year. Um, this is a Miss Marple, um, and yeah, a classic. And a classic Agatha Christie murder mystery. A murder is announced. Next book on my list is a recent read to me. And this is Robert Thorogood's A Killing of Polly Carter. This is a Death in Paradise book. Um, Death in Paradise is a TV series on the BBC. It is classic style, Agatha Christie style murder mysteries. Um, but set on a Caribbean island. So you have a British detective who goes out to this Caribbean island to work and he is faced with all these strange and impossible seeming murders. This one involves a woman who is pushed off or falls off a cliff, but the only witness is her twin sister who happens to be in a wheelchair. Um, uh, did she jump? Was she pushed? How was she pushed? And it is up to the detective to find out. These are absolutely brilliant. They're, they're very light-hearted and humorous. There's a comic subplot through this one. Uh, you don't have to have watched the TV series to read the book. They are standalone, although they use the same characters. You don't need to know them before starting this book. And that is Robert Thorogood, The Killing of Polly Carter. Next up is a very different book, and that is The Dry by Jane Harper. This won the CWA dagger for 2017 or 2016, recently. Um, it's set in America, it's set in Australia during a drought season and an extremely hot summer. Um, absolutely loved this book. So this tells the story of a family who are murdered and the suspect is the husband and then there's a big funeral and the case is closed but the the husband's friend who is back there for the funeral is not quite convinced that everything is as it seems to be and starts to to investigate and ask a few questions and try to find out what really happened also, through this book, there are a series of flashbacks to the main characters and and their childhood and an event that happened um, in their childhood. And but it is really well done. It's not clunky flashback flashbacks. It's woven into the novel. Um, really well done. It doesn't jar at all. Sometimes flashbacks. If you go oh, here, we go another ten pages of another storyline but this ties in with the current storyline but is also its own little story as well and that yeah absolutely love this book and that is Jane Harper and I've got the next one Force of Nature on my shelf to read as well and that is The Dry by Jane Harper. Finally I've got a British Library Crime Classics book and these are amazing these are reprints of Golden Age era books that have gone 
out of print and the British Library are bringing them back into print and these are amazing discoveries. These are yeah, classic style Golden Age books and this one is by Freeman Wheels Croft's Antidote to Venom. This one is was a surprise to me as it is told slightly differently. Um, this In this one you follow the owner of a zoo and for the first half of the book you follow his journey as he prepares to commit a murder. So you already know who the murderer is at the start of the book. You don't quite know how how it's done or, or what really happens um, but you know who does it and you follow his story um, as events unfold. And then the second half of the book, a police officer is introduced who investigates and digs up certain clues to come to the solution. Um, so a bit like um, a Columbo episode where the first 20 minutes you see the murder and then Columbo comes in and then for the next hour or so you follow Columbo as he tries to tries to solve it. It's a bit like that style of, of book. And I didn't think I'd like it, but it was so well written and you re and the characters were so well drawn that that you really, really are drawn into this this story of this really desperate man who who has to commit murder to for for his own reasons. I won't go into spoilers, but yeah. Absolutely fantastic. And I've got another one which I haven't read yet. So that is Antidote to Venom by Freeman, Freeman Wills Crofts. And I've got another one by Freeman Wills Crofts on my shelf to read, and that is The Hogsback Mystery. I don't think this is the same style. I think this is a more conventional style whodunit. But I'll be, yeah, I'll be looking forward to reading that one. So that is just some of my murder mystery books that I've read this year. Will any of those make it to my top 10 of the year, which I will be filming in a few weeks at time you will have to find out later on so have you read any of those books which murder mysteries have you read this year which ones are you looking forward to reading next year let me know in the comments below you can also find me on instagram and twitter um, talk to me in the comments and i will see you all again in my next video thank you for watching